Hello, Pastor Deborah here. Welcome again to another wonderful spiritual teaching from the Kingdom of Darkness, the educational series about spiritual Babylon and its king, Satan. Yeah, welcome. We're in video and teaching number 28. I've been working through this big blue book that I wrote years ago. I had to learn about the realm that you lived in, the realm that's on the earth, that's controlling most of our issues and affairs, that controls us unseen, a shadow, working through us, people, animals, nature, the kingdom of darkness. Darkness means ignorance, confusion, bewitchment, lies, and spells. And I had to learn about it. And I had to learn about the king of it, Satan himself, the very adversary of God and his heart. We've been working through this big book. We have been working through this big book I wrote years ago. And we're up to the part where we're talking about Lucifer's heart. Lucifer was the name before he became Satan. Lucifer meant the son of the morning, the son, the offspring of the first age, not the son of God, like we are supposed to be, humanity. No matter what planet you're on, what solar system or galaxy you live in, a human, a spirit with a dirt covering, a body of dirt from your planet, we were to be the children of God. But Lucifer was the offspring. He was the child, the creation of the first age of spiritual creation by this creator God, king of the kingdom of heaven, the great I am, the God of the King James Bible. Yeah, God himself. And we're beginning a new video, a new teaching for you. I had to learn much if I was going to help you the Lord's way, which God desired for me to do, not the way of mental health counseling like I was doing. He wanted to help you in the realm of the spirit. Yeah, I didn't know anything about you there. I didn't know where you were, who you were. What was your condition? I didn't know anything about the kingdom of darkness, spiritual Babylon. I barely believed there was a Satan and demons, but not much. So I had to learn. And in my learning, I wrote in this book, The Kingdom of Darkness, Spiritual Babylon came about. So welcome to the Garden of Eden here with me. Pastor Deborah, and you look around, you will see others, precious little ones, sitting and learning. Maybe they're sleeping. Maybe they're wandering around, talking to flowers. Yeah, but we're in the presence and the pleasure and delight of God, the Most High, here in the garden. No, this is not heaven. Heaven is the place where you're for every person, your spirit goes. If it is born again upon the death of your biological earthly body. As long as your body is still living, the heart is beating. You can come to the garden. And you get a little taste, a little bit of the atmosphere, the presence of God himself for your spirit. You might be in the womb yet, not even come out. Yes, you can come. You might be a little infant taking a bottle, nursing, a child, young teen, young adult, an elder of your community. It might be in prison, jails, brothels. It might be in caves, trapped. Mm -hmm. it might be human trafficked. It might be locked in a nation, being or one that's being attacked. Everyone is welcomed, even the horrible 
bad icky ones. For they too have a spirit. Yeah, even the bad ones. Their spirit is not much use though in this world here in the, on our planets. Because there's two realms. That's right. But both of them are important. You see, you're a kingdom. You have a spirit, a soul, and a physical body. The spirit part of you is to be ruling and reigning by the rules and the laws of its kingdom and its king that it belongs to. If you're in the kingdom of agape love, the kingdom of heaven, the Holy Spirit is to be your teacher ruling you. But if you're living in the kingdom of darkness, not yet born again, or you've decided to go off from God and his kingdom and live in another land, serve another Satan, and you're in the kingdom of darkness in your mind, in your spirit. That's what we want to talk about. So we're going to talk about in this one, number 28, Satan's heart and the heart of his children and how important his heart, his image and likeness is. This motion video is from Pixabay. It sort of represents the heart of Satan where pride is sitting in now. It's always moving. It's always transitory. It's not safe. It's filled with light, but it's fire. It's not clear anymore. It's confused, bewitched. Yeah. It takes on shapes of animals and creatures. Yeah, it's horrible. But it has some kind of beauty to it. But thank you, Pixabay, for it. And we're recording in Zoom Pro. And as you know, I don't use green screens. They're too cumbersome, too big. They don't work for me. So please forgive me if I'm fuzzy or if the words on the screen are fuzzy or things happen around my hair or my hand disappears into the background. But I usually have a busy day. I have to sit down, record when it's quiet in the house or the neighborhood. Yes, I'm physically in my living room. Today is quiet for just a little while. Then I have to go and do other things. And my computer's working overtime. It's uploading two videos to the ministries, two YouTube channels of the Hidden Kingdoms and for children of all ages at the same time I'm recording. So thank you for the wonderful, wonderful computer, Dell Company. Yeah, but it's a gaming computer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's begin first with prayer. Then we'll get into the teaching. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have brought us all here today in the spirit. Millions and millions and millions and millions of us together to learn more about ourselves and you and our adversary. The kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of confusion and death and pride and lust. The kingdom of Satan's heart, our very adversary that we may not even believe in or know that he exists. Father, thank you for going to teach us about Satan's heart and how important the heart is and where you store your image and likeness, even in Satan, who would become our adversary, who you cast out of your kingdom for his treacherous, treasonous, mutinous, thoughts and images in his heart because pride set in and he created graven images desired to take over your spot not follow the rules he was created to follow thank you father for teaching us and helping us to learn more about you our adversary our spiritual adversary satan and his demons and that we might be living in the kingdom of darkness ourselves and what it is, and how a heart represents an image and a likeness of its creator. Thank you for teaching us today here in the Garden of Eden, in your pleasure, in your presence, and in your delight. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being and anointing the words. And thank you, Christ Jesus, the word made flesh, 
who made all of this possible by going to a cross, bridging the gap of death for us to cross into life when we believe in you and your act of love on the cross. Just on your name alone, we thank you, Father, for all three of you doing what only you could do to help us. Now be about your work of the kingdom, of teaching, of helping, and bringing light into our darkness. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. As I said, we're working through this big blue book. Got a lot to go yet. You don't understand. God set me home for years, and I wrote. I didn't really have a job anymore. He took me out of mental health counseling. I became dependent on husband and lived a very frugal life financially. And I wrote, and I studied, and I watched movies, and I read the Bible, and I wrote, and I prayed. I walked around the yard. Talked to squirrels, talked to trees, wrote, wrote some more, looked in the dictionaries, used the Strong's Concordance, wrote, wrote. And now you are getting to take advantage of all those years of studying. But we're going to pick up here in the Kingdom of Darkness, number 28. And we try to remember that Lucifer had dethroned God in his own heart. Because of his pride. His pride came in when he would look at himself, inside of himself, and see his glory and beauty. And he decided that he should be the big guy sitting on the throne, not serving him. He wanted to be like Lord Sauron and the Lord of the Rings, the master who serves no one. He didn't like serving, but he had been doing it for who knows how long. So he crowned himself king, God, creator, in his thoughts and images, in his heart, deep inside here. Because the word tells us later on, as you think in your heart, so you are. Christ Jesus teaches us a powerful lesson. You can look at people, say, maybe who have had an adulterous relationship. They're married, and they do have sex with another. He says, yes, your law says that's wrong. That's for the flesh. But he says, but I, I look at your thoughts of your heart, like I looked at Lucifer's. And if your thoughts up here in your heart, in your spirit. You have already done this before your physical body even did it. Because as you think, so you are. So when we see a thief, a human trafficker, a liar, and they speak over a microphone, they steal, they kill, whatever, they've already done it in their mind, their heart. It's already done. Some people have all these kind of thoughts, and they never act on them. But according to God and his word, you've already done it. So we learn that Satan, who was Lucifer, crowned himself in his own thoughts. I will bow to no one, and I will serve no one. His heart committed high treason, his thoughts, his images, his concepts, his ideas, the culture within himself, it turned against his Lord, his owner, his creator, God, the Most High. He became ruled in his behaviors by his heart, his thoughts, his concepts, his own ideas and images, and he was able to affect others in their heart, in their thoughts. Maybe he had a microphone. Maybe he had secret meetings. Maybe his spirit, which he was, moved quietly when he thought nobody was looking. He was able to defile, desecrate, his holy places, 
that God had set up in him, in his heart, for God the Most High to be in, the throne room, the Holy of Holies inside of Lucifer. Lucifer dethroned him, defiled it. The holy temple that was in him. Lucifer's heart now had a new king. And he had built a new kingdom within himself of his own thoughts, ideas, concepts, beliefs, desires, and lust. Lucifer's pride lifted his heart up, his mind, to be the king. Lucifer's pride desired to have a kingdom for himself that he would rule and he would serve no one. Lucifer's pride needed to crown himself and place himself on the throne of his own heart. You can spot it so easily once you know what it looks like. You'll hear it come out of people's mouths. Mm -hmm. Politicians, judges, lawyers, mamas, fathers, teachers, school boards, school unions, business owners, kings, queens, royalty. You'll hear it come out of their mouths. And now Lucifer, who had become Satan, the adversary of God, who was now the new king of himself and Lord, he needed subjects to worship him and to serve him, just like he had done to the great I am. So he knew the pattern. When you're the king, you got to have servants, worshipers. You must be obeyed. You see, Lucifer, who was now Satan, knew the pattern for a kingdom. For what being a king did. For he had been in God's service and kingdom since he was created. And he served the great I am, the king of the kingdom of heaven, his Lord. He knew that. So he knew he too now had to have servants and be worshipped, praised. Lucifer's kingdom within himself, his heart, his mind, demanded worshipers. Lucifer's pride and his kingdom within desired the same things God had. Lucifer's kingdom would have no other king, no other lord, owner, or master but him. Well, God heard all of this, and God saw all of this happening inside of Lucifer's mind, his heart. And God could not have that in the kingdom of heaven. It was treason, rebellion, sin, unrighteousness. God's righteousness and holiness, his justice, his light and his truth, his sinless essence would destroy all sin and the creature that had it. But God had a plan to use Satan to help us, believe it or not. God knew this was going to happen, and he knew who. So he was going to use this fallen cherubim, this high archangel, Lucifer, who had become Satan. He would cast him down to the earth, to the planet, out of the kingdom. And he would use him to his advantage. So out of God's presence and out of God's kingdom, Lucifer was sent, who was now Satan, cast down as lightning to the earth below was now twisted and perverted, filled with iniquity, hate, and jealousy, burning fires of lust that could not be fulfilled. You may be wondering, how did God know 
what was going on in the very heart, the mind, the thoughts of Lucifer. Was God watching him? Could God hear his thoughts? Was God watching mutations occur? Perversions happen, iniquity occur? Was he watching the birthing of a new heart? And that's a very good question that should apply to you also. Let's hear what God says about him and his heart. And how God looks at people, even you. This is out of 1 Samuel 1, 7. God is talking to the Old Testament prophet Samuel. And it's about choosing the second king of Israel after King Saul. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance, that means his face, or on his height of his stature, because I have refused him. Who is he talking about? King Saul. Saul was from the smallest tribe, Benjamin. He was a tall, probably very handsome young man. God said, don't look at the outside physical appearance. I reject that. For the Lord sees not as man sees, Samuel. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. After the event with Lucifer becoming Satan, we learn. Now we can use Lucifer's fall into iniquity and darkness from the word. Then later on in 1 Corinthians 1, 14, 25, we learn, thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. Means they are shown and known. God is trying to tell us his abilities to see into your heart, your mind, your thoughts of your spirit and your soul. Everything in there, every thought you have, desire, every reason you do something. He can see it. He can hear it. Mm -hmm. The secrets are known. Oh, it may never come out in a court of law. You may never get caught. You may never get sort of cornered. But he already can see it. And it is his judgment alone. That is important. In Jeremiah 17, 10, we learn that I, the Lord, search the heart. He's looking at you as he looked at Lucifer. He's watching. Don't know how he did it, but he does. He knows Pastor Deborah's thoughts, my desires. Why am I mad, upset? Who am I mad at? He can see images I create in my mind. He's looking at my spirit. What my spirit knows and believes and is doing. Why is it doing what it's doing? So we have to study the heart, the mind, the image, the likeness. The heart, the place of God's Eden, the place of God's kingdom. Lucifer's heart was this. The place of God's lordship, the place in the very middle, the place of fellowship the place of worship, the place of truth and light, the place of love of the Father. That's how Lucifer, the high archangel, the cherubim, who covered, protected the very presence of God himself, who was given the authority and dominion to protect God from sinners and sin. He was given keys of authority and dominion to hell, death, and the grave. He knew about hell. He knew about death, spiritual separation from God, and he knew about the grave, the death of our physical bodies. We have to study the heart, the mind of the spirit, the heart, the place where Lucifer became a sinner, a trespasser, illegal, unrighteous, unholy, the place where high treason was committed against its Lord, its owner, its creator, 
its king, God the Most High. The place of violence toward the Lord. The place of pride. That's what this video is showing you deep inside. Mm -hmm. The place where the land became a wilderness, separated from God. No light, no living water, no holiness, no joy, no peace. Now just filled with lust, flames, desires, hatred, jealousy, envy, greed. Can't be witched. That's the power of pride. The place where the land now was dry. God was not there with his living words of life. The place where the land was not yielding its strength for food and nourishment to the heart. The place where the land was barren. God was not there. The beauty of God was not there. His truth, his knowledge, his wisdom was not there. The place of darkness and ignorance now, perverted knowledge, twisted confusion. Witchcraft came. The occult came, perversions, iniquity. The heart was filled with fear, whoredoms. The place of a kingdom. The pride of Satan. The place of dominion of a king and lord. The heart. The throne room of a lord. The holy of holies. The seat of authority. The place to receive worship. The place of receiving living spiritual food. Can you imagine going from a beauty in your heart your thoughts to a beast. We can see that when an innocent baby comes out of the womb, if it's allowed to, and it's not killed for greed or money, mm -hmm. or because of hatred. When a baby comes out, even an animal, we all just ooh and ah over its tenderness and its cuteness. Yeah. It's has no perversion in it at that time. But it is still made in Satan's image. The DNA of the biological body and soul have been changed and perverted. They've taken on Satan's image and likeness. They are his children now. So when this occurred in Lucifer, and Lucifer became Satan, the adversary of God, in his heart, God brought forth from out of Lucifer, who had become Satan, out from the middle of his heart, a fire, a lust, a burning desire, flames that would never be extinguished. and They would devour him. You see that. And many world leaders, where they desire to take over the world. I can't think of anything else. Eventually, it destroys them. It's when you can't get enough food or sex or money. You're always burning, lusting, desiring, seeking something. He says that it will destroy you, devour you, eat you alive, so to speak. In your thoughts, the fire of God that came forth from the very middle of Lucifer, who was now Satan, would eat him alive in his heart, would burn and consume his heart with thoughts of lust, envy, hate, violence, jealousy, never satisfied, always wanting more, more, more. Burning, flames, smoke of confusion, never getting what he wants, never able to have his kingdom, never settled, always burning, moving, just like this motion video. And God continued to talk to Lucifer in Ezekiel 28, 
11 through 19. And God said to Lucifer, I will bring you, Lucifer, to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all of them that behold you. Pastor Deborah can see him. Pastor Deborah's met him, talked to him, looked in his eyes, seen him. Others have not yet seen him. They don't even believe he's real. He's just that red thing with a pitchfork. They don't they think he's just fun and games. He's not real. Can't see him in nature or humanity. But Pastor Deborah can behold him. God would cause Lucifer to lie scattered over the earth as ashes from a fire. Mm -hmm. Let's put this all together. Lucifer lifted himself up in his heart, and he became prideful. That's humanity for you. Because we became his image and his likeness, his offspring. When our first forefather named Adam disobeyed a commandment, we lost the Holy Spirit, got kicked out of this garden until a sacrifice could be made for what we did. You see, all of humanity was inside of Adam in seed form and inside of his helpmate, woman, the wound spiritual being in egg form. All of us were lost, perverted, and became picked up by a new father, Satan. And we, too, had the seeds of pride, and we see it every day. Satan's wisdom that he was given became corrupted. He desired and then said in his heart his five I wills. He dethroned God as Lord in his heart. Have you done that? Most people have, especially politicians, business owners. Their God and Lord is money, greed, power, mm -hmm. sex, fame, fortune. He crowned himself. He built a new kingdom of himself in his heart. He went about God's kingdom and sought subjects and worshipers. One third of the angels who worked under him, when he was Lucifer, they fell with him. His tail caught him because they had started serving him. They became his subjects, his slaves. God cast through Lucifer and one third of the angels to the ground, to the earth, out of the presence of God, out of the kingdom of heaven, out of heaven, out to darkness, out to the waterless places, out. They were perverted now, treasonous, murders, filled with hate and jealousy, rebellion. Lucifer became Satan, the adversary of God. Anything you see that does not have God's heart, if you know him, if God says do not kill innocent things for money or kill innocent little ones, that's his heart. That's his rules. And if you do anything other than that, you separate out your politics from God. You have dethroned him in your heart. The one third of the heavenly angels that were under Lucifer, they became demonic spirits, demons, evil, wicked, perverted spirits, just like Satan. The spiritual world of God in Lucifer's heart and in the created spiritual world of God's creation here on earth. There was a spiritual world to be on this natural planet, ruling and reigning it through humanity 
or on your planet through you. Mm -hmm. God didn't want to come down there. He wanted his Holy Spirit in you, in your spirit, your spirit to be subject and a servant to the Holy Spirit who represented the kingdom of heaven. Then out through your soul, the helpmate, then out through your physical body. And God would be ruling your planet from the realm of the spirit. The unseen would be ruling the seen. But instead, a wilderness occurred within you and on your planet. The kingdom of heaven was shaken. Cities, those hearts and minds of people, of nature, were destroyed. Prisoners were taken, even the weather, the trees, the animals, the air that we breathe. Fear ruled everything and everybody. Upon Lucifer touching the ground from heaven and his one-third of his angels, Satan took over. Now, this did not bother God. But when did he fall? I'm not sure. Was it before all the planets were created? Could have been. We learned here on planet Earth, there were dinosaurs, but they were flesh-eating creatures. There were volcanoes, very violent place. Had Lucifer already fallen? Don't know. When was the garden placed here? Don't know. Did all of that get changed? Don't know. Lots of studying has to happen. Lucifer, the light bearer, the guardian of hell, death, and the grave, a high archangel, a cherub, became Satan, the adversary of God. God desires you to see this fall of Lucifer. For man, us, humanity, we followed in his very steps. Satan became our image and likeness right in the womb, in the eggs and sperm of every human on every planet. We became the children of Satan. Mm -hmm. Made in his image and his likeness, perverted and twisted. You see that when babies are born with, call them deformities. Some people say, well, God didn't create imperfection. That's right. He didn't. Satan did. But you'd have to believe that, that the eggs and the sperm, the DNA inside the physical body were perverted and changed and had a new father now. But if you don't study, you won't learn that. Satan, an enemy of God, became our enemy. But he was our father at the same time. So when we're born, mm -hmm, we're already born as a child of Satan, even in the womb. Man in his fall entered into the kingdom of darkness. We were to be the rulers. Lucifer was to be our cherubim helping us, maybe guiding us for God. And that got all perverted and twisted. Humanity fell into darkness, into ignorance and confusion. We became perverted and twisted. Even in our DNA. We now had a new father, the dragon. We had a new Lord, the dragon. Mm -hmm. Satan's outward looks became perverted. He was probably a beautiful beast of some kind. And he became a fiery drake, a fire-breathing dragon. We, humanity, in our disobedience through our forefather, Adam, 
For we were there in seed form in his sperm. And we were there in wound man, woman, in egg form. We fell. The Holy Spirit left. Our DNA was perverted and twisted. No light, no water. We became Satan's. We became children of darkness, of the kingdom of darkness, prisoners of sin and the fear of death, slaves to pride, lust, Satan's own heart in the kingdom of darkness. We became his slaves. He would work through us to rule and reign our planets from deep in the heart of our spirit, through our spirit, through our soul, through our physical body. The heart of Satan would rule us, even though we didn't know it. The kingdom of heaven became a legend. It became fairy tales, science fiction, fables, hidden away in a mist. But somehow we had some kind of memories of it. <laughs> but not much. The kingdom of darkness became our home. We serve a king. You see that in structures like the mafia. You see it in political parties. You see it. If you do not serve the one who gave you life, you're dead or will kill your family. The spiritual world, we were in it. But the world we lived in now was darkness, ignorance, full of slavery and fear. It became our way of life. We knew nothing of the kingdom of heaven, of our early years. We don't know why we do what we do, why we kill each other, why there's wars. We have no idea. Everybody tries to understand it from economics, politics, mental health. And yet, they don't want to look into the spiritual realm. The kingdom of darkness, spiritual Babylon, is in every man's heart, every woman's heart, every child's heart, every teen's heart. In our mind, our spirit lives in this spiritual kingdom, ruled by the king of the darkness, of the ignorance and confusion of pride, lust, and fire, hate, jealousy, envy, perversion, controlled by fear, Satan, the dragon, the adversary of God. So that helps us a little bit to understand Satan's beginnings and ours when we're born onto our planet and why there was such a need for us to die. And be born again. Now this did not catch God off guard. He knew it was going to happen. All Satan knows is he's fighting against the tyranny he believes of God's rulership. And his desire to have his own kingdom. And slaves and worshipers. And be praised. And have his way. His heart ruling and reigning on our planet's. Ruling nature, animals, for him to be happy. But he's never happy, never satisfied. Him and God are always at war. God is always winning. Looks like sometimes God is losing, but he's not. Remember, God is a spirit, and he's after your spirit. Satan is a spirit. He's after your spirit. This is a spiritual battle that I entered into and knew nothing about as a mental health counselor. And most of the world doesn't know about it. They look at it as mental health problems, trying to solve violence, school shootings, wars, understanding people, understanding famines, political leaders. It's a spiritual war in a spiritual kingdom, trying to rule and reign 
our planets. Sometimes it's in the weather. Did you know that you are cursed from your own earth when you spill blood on it? Long ago it happened. The earth cursed us. It will not give us its blessings, bring forth food and water. The weather's against us, animals, nature, because we're cursed from the earth. We're out of God's presence. We're not a son of God until you're born again. And if you're born again, you're a baby. You've got to grow. So part of my growth to help you was to study Satan, who used to be Lucifer, and study his heart and how he changed. I had to study pride, fires of lust, the fall, the kingdom of darkness, spiritual Babylon. I had to study Satan to understand myself and you. I had to study kingdoms and kings and rulership and land. I had to study curses and blessings so I could see what was going on on our planets. Why are there famines? Why is there lack of water? Why are there earthquakes and volcanoes? I had to study the weather. I had to study fire and it's burning in wildfires. I had to understand mental health counseling, the biological body, and then the realm of the spirit. I only had movies and books and stories, the Bible to read. God had to help me even today. And now Pixabay is helping us to show us and visualize deep inside the realm of the spirit where we don't normally go. Religion isn't spiritual. Church is not spiritual. Culture, traditions, ancestors. Mm -hmm. What happened? Age of reasoning came. And all the spiritual stuff was set aside as superstition. But yet we have tarot card readers, psychics, people who channel spirits. For some reason, they're not considered evil or wicked, but helpful people. Many psychics help policemen. Mm -hmm. And we something in us wants that supernatural ability, connection. And we want to help. So it's not seen as evil. And one of the greatest deceptions, confusion, darkness, and ignorance that Satan has ever pulled over us, and you too, is that he is not real. Mm -hmm. Calls it different names to make it acceptable. Mm -hmm. But you be encouraged. You learn. If you find out you're not born again yet, and this could be you, and Satan is your father, you can come out of that through death and then rebirth. The cross made it possible for you to come home and be born again out of this kingdom of darkness and get a new father, a new image and likeness, a new heart within you of the great I am. You'll get the Holy Spirit in you. You'll become a new creature of the light, now, not of the darkness. You'll no longer be Satan's child. Oh, but he'll keep threatening you and trying to keep you and get him to serve you and to serve him anyway. He'll keep working to trap you and ensnare you, get you back. We see that all the time. He's a domestic violence criminal. You try to leave him, and he will come after you. You'll use your family, your community against you. They might kill you. Because he ain't going to let you go. Satan doesn't let his children, his prisoners, his slaves go without a fight. Mm -hmm. But it is possible. Pastor Deborah made it. Many do, and they go on to heaven. Many don't make it out, and they die, and they go to heaven. 
but you be encouraged. There's hope. The cross made it possible. A great victory was won against the king of the kingdom of darkness. Satan lost on a cross. The victory of love and life overcame death and evil and sin. He wasn't counting on that. He didn't know about it. That was all done before he was even created. But God is showing himself more powerful. That out of death will come life. That out of love will come newness of children. That what the king, the great I am, of the kingdom of heaven lost, he gets back. But not the way you are now. No. In a new form, a new creature, a non-gendered spiritual being, a creature of the light, a son of God yourself, born again, new from the cross, from the blood of the sacrifice of Christ Jesus. Oh, that day was horrible for Satan. He didn't know it was coming. Now he fights against many of us. Mm -hmm. Pastor Deborah's been shot at, poisoned, almost stabbed to death with scissors in my own home, lied against to the police, attacked by husband, family, mm -hmm. had things stolen from it. Yeah. All because I love you and all because I'm trying to help you to come home. And be a new creature in Christ Jesus. And explain the cross to you. And explain your rebirth. And teach you about the spiritual kingdom that's on your planet. The ruling and reigning unbelievers in Christ. Oh, you might believe that Christ, that Jesus was a teacher. He was. He was a prophet. He was a son. But he was the child of God. The offspring. Filled with the Holy Spirit, the Messiah that was coming. God himself in man, in Manuel was God. Powerful teachings. Mm -hmm. There is life after death. Life after your physical body is destroyed. That's the one God is working to get. Death will take your physical body. It's part of your planet, your earth, you're on. It's created in violence and sin. But the spirit, it too must die. When you're a child of Satan, you cannot enter into the relationship with God until you're born again. You just believe in his name, that he's real, he loves you, and he has come to help you. That's all. He'll do the rest. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you at the end of this teaching of the kingdom of darkness, spiritual Babylon about the heart of Satan, his image and likeness, that you're offering birth out of death. Life can come forth out of death. The children you lost can come home to the kingdom of heaven. And they too will now know what you know about Satan, the adversary of them and God. Father, help them fulfill Isaiah 61 and 62 in their lives. Give them a Hebrews 4.12 while they're here in the garden with you. Spiritually circumcise their spirit out of the lust of their eyes, the lust of their flesh, and the pride of their life, of their soul, so they can be taught freely. Help them, Father, every single day, every moment, in every dream, in every spirit trip, help them to come to love you and know you and desire to be your child and to come out of the kingdom of darkness. You've already opened the door. The way is made. They just don't know it yet, Father. Help them to believe that your son, Christ, was you in man, your word, the son of God. Help them to receive the Holy Spirit, your life, your governor, your teacher in their spirit. To build your kingdom of heaven inside their dirt, inside their soul and spirit. Be about your work, Father. This is your work of your heart. 
be about it in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Okay, I'll see you on the next Kingdom of Darkness. Should be number 29 out of the big blue book. See you then. Bye.